My name is uh, Yona Alexander. I am the director of the Inter University Center for Terrorism Studies, which is a consortium of universities, think tanks, focusing on terrorism. It is uh, administered by the Potomac uh, Institute. And you are based now at the Potomac Institute, as you know, in Arlington, Virginia, uh, in cooperation with some sister uh, institutions uh, in Washington. For example, the International Law Institute, which was founded by Georgetown University School of Law, uh, as well as the University of Virginia Law School and many other uh, institutions. Um, on behalf of the co-sponsors, we would like to welcome you. Uh, General Al Gray, as you know, the 28th Commandant of the Marine Corps and the Senior Fellow of the Potomac Institute and Chairman of the Board of Regents of the Potomac Institute uh, will join us uh, actively uh, during today's uh, discussion. And um, I would uh, like to uh, first uh, welcome the distinguished uh, uh, ambassador um, and then we'll move on. So we provided uh, you with a um, detailed bio of the uh, ambassador. So I'm going to just mention one or two uh, aspects that obviously are very relevant to the discussion today. Uh, as an academic, I always look at uh, the background, the academic uh, background and uh, experience, and uh, clearly is, um, if I may use the term, interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary, uh, dealing with uh, law and economics and technology and maritime issues, etc. And I think, um, obviously, to deal with many of the security concerns of Spain and many other countries, one is to have an interdisciplinary really perspective. So again, academically, I think he was uh, trained in this uh, field and also professionally with the private uh, sector, for example, uh, dealing with some of the issues. And uh, particularly, I would like to recognize uh, the many uh, contributions from what I could see um, of uh, the ambassador um, when he served as uh, deputy, according to, to the record, uh, deputy uh, minister of science technology, for example, and security and defense. And of course, uh, it was um, also the minister of defense. And we're going to deal with many of these uh, issues. Um, again, it's um, great uh, to have uh, the ambassador to speak on these uh, issues, but um, I, I really think that um, beyond even the security uh, issues, I know that some of my um, students, both undergraduate and graduate students, they ask me if I know whether you're a fan of Real Madrid or Barcelona, or maybe another, another theme. I said, I'm sorry, I know some things about the ambassador, but I don't know about that, but we'll see. Now, before I in actually um, proceed with um, your presentation, I would like to have um, one or two footnotes. And um, this uh, actually relates to the uh, academic activity that we conducted uh, with Spain going back uh, over 40 years with uh, the universities and institutes and think tanks, uh, etc., and also in terms of publications. I'm um, very pleased uh, 
Mr. Ambassador, first to present to you a study on ETA that um, my colleague, Michael Swetnam, who is actually the, the president and CEO of the Potomac Institute, uh, jointly with another colleague we published in, in, in 2001 on ETA because we thought if we want to be relevant to the concerns of security, we better deal with uh, a group in Europe which has a long history, as we know, and uh, obviously would like to get your views about the situation um, with um, uh, ETA. But uh, in, addition, uh, in addition to that, I would like to uh, report to you that um, this year alone, uh, we had two delegations right here from the European Union and some members um, who are Spanish at the European Union uh, Parliament as well as the National par Parliament. And um, uh, also we are conducting currently uh, activities, for example, with the Institute of Fusion in uh, Madrid dealing with weapons of mass destruction. And through the NATO umbrella, we're also cooperating with the Center of Excellence, the CIED, uh, as we know that uh, is dealing with improvised explosive devices how to save lives. So we're very, very proud academically to be able to uh, contribute, however modestly, to the discussion. One more thing, if I may, Mr. Ambassador. Usually, we try to express our deep sympathy with the victims of terrorism. Uh, and we always uh, look at the calendar and so on and so forth. Uh, since um, this is uh, the month of uh, November, I, I would like to, to mention that uh, in 1979, of course, as we know, the American embassy in Tehran was seized by so-called extremists or militants, and they were held captive for 444 days, as we know. As far as Spain uh, is concerned, all of us grieved in uh, March 2004, when the attacks took place in Madrid, uh, killing almost uh, 1,000 people, wounding uh, some 2,000. And clearly, this was the most uh, dramatic, uh, devastating attack in the history of uh, Europe. So again, uh, with this um, uh, brief uh, comments, I would like to invite you to speak for as long as you want. We can develop a discussion dialogue with our distinguished audience. Thank you very much, Professor Alexander, General Gray. It's a great uh, honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, following what you have um, your introduction, um, I would like to uh, to enter in this uh, subject uh, through my uh, personal experience along, <coughs> along the time I have had the opportunity to live uh, close to politics and uh, the administration, uh, particularly uh, with regard to, to the fight against uh, terror and, um, and also to enhance the connections between the United States and Spain in the uh, area of the defense, bilateral bases, multilateral bases, and how today defense and security, precisely because of terrorism uh, jumping into the systems and capacities that uh, usually defense had, uh, defense and, uh, and security uh, are closer and closer every day. Uh, in 2018, the agreement between the United States and Spain in the area of defense will uh, come to 30 years of life. 
But the people of my generation, we recall, even though I was a child, how in 1957, General Eisenhower, President of the United States of America, was visiting the chief of uh, state in Spain. And uh, f the, the aerial bases of Zaragoza, Torrejón, and Moron were established and together with the, uh, the Rota base. Then these were uh, American bases. Today they are, uh, you are in Moron and in Rota in Spanish bases where you are uh, hosted. And uh, with this, um, with these uh, capacities, which are based on our geostrategic position in the world, we have built up a very strong uh, link between uh, both our countries. And uh, this link has resisted mm, mm, every now and then some type of political problems that fortunately is so strong the, the need and so strong the, the trust that we have to each other in this regard of defense and security that today we can say that during the last five years, we amended twice the agreement in order to host you in Rhoda with four uh, destroyers, anti-missile shield, and in Moron twice to have your, not only your people of the air, I mean the Air Force, but also the Marines there. And the Marines there mm, do, fundamentally to the attack you suffer in Libya for, uh, against your diplomatic delegation there. And since then, we are cooperating in Spain and outside Spain. Why is very important that uh, the connection between this country and Spain uh, is enhanced every day in the, in the areas of security and defense, particularly in this case in defense, and I come back to the link between security and defense. It is very important because today uh, no uh, country in the world, not even the United States, can live alone. And can live alone in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the area of trade, can live alone in the, in the economy, can, uh, cannot be alone in any respect, and much less in security and defense. The relation between Spain and the United States in security and defense is based, and I would like to make a, 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 a comment here. In the literature of NATO today, we find more the word security than the word defense, which means that all of the, we are very much concerned about how problems, all problems of security are affecting our countries in a very dramatic way lately. So, the connection, bilateral connection uh, uh, between Spain and the, and the United States is uh, more and more consolidated. We have to work hard in the new capacities that are creating trust among our countries, particularly I mention intelligence and I mentioned cyber security and cyber defense. I think that it is absolutely important that the cooperation in this new, very ample world of uh, these, uh, these two areas uh, are more and more uh, fixed. And it's not easy because uh, when I will come to NATO, you will understand, it's not easy uh, to trust in both areas information, intelligence, and uh, cyber uh, technology, cyber defense are today, uh, mm, are today uh, weak because the lack of trust and because the danger that we are living today that even our ally, allies and even our, our own people can uh, destroy, and you, say you have the examples in this country, but we have the examples in our country, how this security in the cyber has been broken in a very disloyal way 
by people working for ourselves before. No? In the area of NATO, Spain, uh, in 1978, we decided to, 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 to jump into uh, um, democracy, um, acceptable, homologated, uh, uh, homologated for all uh, our um, partners in, 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 in NATO, in Europe, in the United States and, and in Canada, and we decided to build this in a constitution which is a clear example of our vocation to live in peace, in freedom, in justice, and in a pure uh, democracy uh, ruled by the rule of law. And we have that, and that is what has granted the 42 years of um, most successful in Spain since we have a memory of our history. Mm, within NATO, uh, I um, was in 1996, I joined, uh, I joined the Ministry of Defense, and I listened there the, the mantra in NATO that we, the European countries, we should invest more in, in, in defense and that we cannot hang on the effort of the United States in this regard. And this was said by Secretary Cohen, by uh, Deputy Minister here, Deputy Secretary uh, John Hamre. And when I joined uh, back uh, again, we came back to the to the uh, Ministry of Defense, uh, Secretary Gates was saying the same. Secretary Panetta, uh, I, I met three secretaries, Panetta, Chuck Hegel, and Ashcart. The three of them were saying the same. You should take care of your own uh, defense. And the only thing that we can do, and it is fair to say, is that you, ha you have the, the capacity to defend yourselves and then with this capacity contribute to the defense of, of the other members of NATO. And this is exactly what Spain has done. I have to tell you that uh, we have problems in our budget because we had, we suffered a tremendous crisis affecting our, our budget. But uh, in spite of that, we are today in any and all the operations that either NATO, NATO and the European Union have abroad. And this is an example of our vocation to contribute to the stability of the world in the, with the length of our capacities uh, and, uh, and, uh, and without respect that we have to make a tremendous effort considering, I repeat, the tremendous as well crisis that we suffer from 90, for 2008 to 2011. And this has been recognized, and this is today what uh, creates a trust between your country and our country. We, I always say that, uh, that uh, and I have to repeat, unfortunately, because some of you have, have uh, listened to me to, to, to tell this thing, but this is, Spain is committed with the stability in the world. It's not only involved, as other countries could be, we are committed. And this is, uh, sorry for this uh, joke, uh, Professor, but the difference between committed and involved, it is like uh, eggs and bacon. Oh. In eggs and bacon, the hen is involved, but the pig is committed. And, uh, and uh, exactly this is what we are doing from Afghanistan to Iraq, to Turkey, to the Mediterranean, to the area of Yemen, to the piracy in Somalia, in the north of Africa, in the Sahel, in the Gulf of Guinea, and wherever we are requested to be in order to defend our values, our principles, our interests, which are exactly the same as yours in many respects, and this is fortunately because also our businessmen, our all the type of people they are doing business here, you are doing business there, and we have to protect that. Um, how could we enhance in the future the connection in this regard? Well, okay, the, uh, during the presidency of uh, President Obama, he decided to shift the capacities, the military capacities to the Pacific. 
And this was because China was uh, starting to wake up from a, from a, a, a um, situation of, of, uh, of uh, internal problems. And uh, he did, China decided to go to the world and was affecting the, the area of the, uh, the Sea of China and the Pacific. And uh, I think that then President Obama decided to move there. But uh, in 2013, September, after the crisis of Syria, we were discussing, uh, preparing the, 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 the summit of, uh, of September, <coughs> it's September, <coughs> excuse me, in, in, uh, in Wales, in Wales, we were discussing in NATO what could be, what should be the uh, topics uh, for the, that summit in, in, in Wales. And we were discussing the transatlantic bond, the investment in defense, the partnership outside, how we reconduct uh, the, 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 the headquarters of NATO and this type of technical things. In October, November, December, and January, we had the Crimea crisis, the eruption of ISIS in the caliphate. So when we arrived to, to uh, Wales in September, no one of the topics that less than a year before we were thinking about was on the table. And this shows us <coughs> that the world is today moving at a tremendous speed towards nobody knows exactly where. And this is something that uh, should, uh, should uh, die all the, all the, um, all the activities that, that we have to go. And the most important of these activities is to remain united. This is the most important thing. And there are powers in the world trying to disunite what we have worked very hard to have uh, uh, unified during the last 60 years, no? which is the area of NATO and our democracies. No? Um, and I will tell you something regarding this type of, of, uh, of uh, meetings no? and, and, and academic studies. In 2013, I was in Halifax in a, in a seminar for defense and security. In that seminar, we had a a panel like this, and uh, I was the only member of the panel who was stating that the Islamic terrorism was there and it had not disappeared. And I had to, mm, to resist the opinion of the majority of the people all around saying that Al-Qaeda had been uh, defeated and that the terror, Islamic terrorism was not on the picture again. And six months later, or other, we had the ISIS, which has been the most tremendous situation that we have suffered. Not we, the, all, the, 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 all the world, democratic, no democratic, Islamic, non Islamic, brothers. So this is what we have seen afterwards. So this uh, idea of uh, that we have solved, the pro these problems have been solved, and we have to face the next, it is, uh, it is true. But the next are the old disguised of the new. And we, have, we will have always this type of, of, of threats. Um, regarding terrorism, I mean, you have, in your introduction, you have explained something which has uh, led Spain to be really uh, a beacon in, in, in this type of uh, activity. We suffered terrorism for almost 60 years. The, the ETA terrorism was a, a different terrorism, but they were utilizing uh, a tremendous capacity of destruction, starting first with attacking the military people, the police, the civil guard, some entrepreneurs, and ending, uh, blasting a supermarket and no care about if they were children and so on. This is what we suffer in Spain. And from then we learn a tremendous lesson. We learn the lesson of uh, the you can defeat 
the people and you should defeat the, the bad guys uh, the terrorists with the state of law of course but with all the strength that the state of law permits you and you cannot accept any agreement outside the rule of law because then you have lost the battle and we won and we won all of us we won the the, the socialists and, and the and the party popular all of them they united united against the common enemy and we won we won and we are very happy with this situation but very happy with 1,000 people killed by these people on, on our shoulders. Hmm? So, uh, and, but we learn lessons from that. So state of law, strength of the law, and after the terror is defeated, we can analyze what the problems, remaining problems are, but not before. Hmm? And this is a lesson that we have in our genetics. Uh, in the future, mm, when I was in uh, Secretary of State for, for uh, Security, we started in uh, we started to see some new problems in Spain regarding all the types of threats based on radicalism, which were not uh, radicalism or ETA. And uh, four years later, no, two years later perhaps less than that, two years later, we had the problem of the, uh, of the train station of uh, Atocha, where 100, 191 people were killed, thousands uh, wounded, and with a capacity to destabilize the Spain, tremendous capacity to destabilize the political uh, system in Spain. The political normal way of things going that uh, it was in Spain, affecting the elections, creating bad feelings between the, the main uh, po political parties, and leading to something which was like a mist about uh, the way in which this was handled by ones and the others in that, in that very moment. This is to show the tremendous capacity to destabilization that the terrorism has in the world. And uh, after that, I have explained the, 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 this story about the, the, the NATO, the, 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 the situation. We had another tremendous problems with the illegal immigration. And I would like to make a final consideration regarding this. In, the, in, this, in, in my time as, as Minister of Defense, what we have seen is that we have sovereignty protecting our countries. We share with uh, allies sovereignty with, with NATO, European Union, bilateral basis. We, but we still have, and it is uh, understandable, our own precautions, even with our allies, which makes us weak. Because the bad guys, even though they hate each other and they are not uh, sharing values and so on, they cooperate without any respect to uh, sovereignty. The drug trafficking through the Gulf of Guinea is financing the Boko Haram terrorism, the Boko Haram, and they go north and they meet with, uh, with uh, ISIS or whatever the, the branch of ISIS is there. They go north and they go through Libya, and they arrive protected by the terrorists to Europe. And how they come to there? They come, the drug in one side, and the terrorism is also financing itself with the illegal traffic of people, which is even a, 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 more, uh, um, a more dramatic and, 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 and uh, rejectable um, way of, 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 of living, no? but uh, we know that uh, the sub-Saharian man with $100, $1,000 arrived to the coast of Libya, and they are uh, boarded in a, in a, in a, in a, in a foam, I, I don't know how, the, in a zodiac, or I, what, I don't know what the name is, <coughs> a boat, a very fragile boat, and they are sent to the Mediterranean, and they are uh, probably sunk there and this is uh, 
exactly what we are facing, no? Uh, so illegal immigration, illegal immigration taking advantage of very poor people and uh, financing terror, terror, drug trafficking, weapons trafficking, and why? Because we have a state failure in Libya. And when you do not have the structure of a state in a, in, in a tremendous wide area as it's Libya, you have a door, you have a refuge for the terrorism and you have a door for problems in your, in our own countries, particularly now in, in Europe. No? So, uh, in one word, uh, what we have to build have to, has to be built on trust and to build something on trust, we have to share and to risk to, be, to believe in our uh, alliances. And this is something that I uh, preach every day I can, because if not, what, what is happening, and the, our society say, how is this possible that spending billions of euros or billions of of dollars in our defense and our security, how can happen? The thing of Paris, the thing in Niza, the thing in Barcelona, the thing in Madrid, the thing here, how, how can happen? Because we lack communication, we lack still all these uh, uh, um, capacities that our uh, states have to uh, multiply in uh, their efficiency based on trust. So I come here and I say, if we want to be uh, united, as the, the, the threat is united, either we build this on trust or we will not be able to do it. And uh, I leave it this here. I could explain a little bit more, but I prefer to answer questions because I think it's much more. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, Ambassador, for your um, overview of some of the um, important uh, issues, security issues uh, facing not only Spain, but the entire international community. In fact, uh, the Spain, the Spanish experience has shown that uh, you can uh, think uh, locally or deal with this, but you have to act globally. And um, uh, the, the role of uh, Spain through NATO participating uh, in Iraq, uh, for example, and uh, <coughs> dealing with some of these issues in North Africa, obviously uh, Mediterranean uh, security, um, and so on. Um, uh, Spain uh, is a um, true, reliable uh, partner in this, this activities. To develop um, maybe a discussion, I, I just want to um, take advantage of my moderate um, quote-unquote position and to ask you a question related to both internal and external uh, challenges. Uh, obviously, you dealt um, in some detail um, the challenge internally of uh, uh, ETA and uh, you were absolutely correct about uh, the lessons of uh, the combination of the rule of law and democracy and the uh, support of the people, even in the Basque country themselves, they rejected um, radicalization and, and violence. And um, I think this is a great uh, achievement, although uh, again, uh, the ETA um, did not, as I understand formally, uh, gave up their uh, weapons uh, as yet. But um, all of us, when I say all of us, um, uh, academics, uh, but the international community is uh, now concerned with the Catalonian crisis. Um, in fact, our colleagues in Brussels are discussing it and we're supposed to have a meeting uh, next uh, month in uh, Brussels to discuss some of these issues. Um, could you um, provide some um, insight, perspective on the uh, challenge uh, of Catalonia and um, 
I, I think from there we can move to some other challenges, including uh, the cyber that you mentioned, <coughs> WMD, um, the role of uh, Russia, and so forth. Well, I could, of course, even though I came here to speak. Somebody asked me the other day, uh, uh, a senator, uh, I asked uh, his uh, chief of staff, mm, I would like to have a meeting with the senator. And uh, the person answered with uh, some ironic smile, uh, you want to speak about Catalonia? And I said, no, I would like to speak about Spain. It is important because I have come here to speak about Spain. Right. And the Spain and the, the connection with the United States. It is, it is true that we have a problem now in Catalonia. But uh, we cannot take the, the part as, as the whole. We have a connection with this country based on Spain. Right. And Spain, of course, including Catalonia, is what is matter and matters and matters here. And uh, I will answer the, what, 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 you, you, what you want, but I, will, I would like to stress here that the ambassador of Spain speaks about Spain. And uh, the, 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 the connection between this country and, and, and Spain is much more important, much more important than the problem of Catalonia itself. So, uh, with all due respect, uh, Professor Alexander, I would like very much to have heard that the first question we could have been, be, could have been, what do you see about the connection between your people in Iraq? Our people in Iraq, no? Now, this, this, after this introduction, I will answer your question, okay? Well, the situation of Catalonia uh, is, uh, first of all, uh, we have a long history. We started in 1492. And in 1492, we decided to apply the motto you 300 years after applied in this country, e pluribus unum. So we built up Spain with the Kingdom of Aragon, including Catal which included Catalonia, the Kingdom of Castle, and the Kingdom of Granada. And by the way, we arrived here to, the, to America, and we started what was understood like the Spanish Empire, which was already through the crown of Aragon, already in Italy. Right? And, uh, but we arrived, uh, we started there. Uh, since then, we have had problems with uh, the centrifuge and centripede problems in Spain. Always we have had. Philip II the, the was the king of Portugal as well, and he decided to move the, 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 the capitals of Spain to Madrid because willing to put it in Lisbon, uh, he had problems with the east coast of Spain, including Catalonia, of course. So he decided to put this in the middle of Spain. And we have had problems in the, in the, in the succession war uh, with the dynasties of the Austrians and the Bourbons and, and the Catalonians there. And, the, and after that, in the beginning of the, the, in the end of the 19th century, the Basques, discover the nationalists, which was based in, the, in some internal wars that we had there. Of course, because the, the dynasty uh, uh, problems in Spain between some branch of the, of the, of the Bourbons and another branch of the Bourbons, so <coughs> we have been uh, uh, living together, uh, and, uh, but not in an easy way. Uh, Chancellor Bismarck uh, used to say that uh, the Spanish people were the strongest uh, people forming the strongest nation in the world because we had spent 500 years trying to destroy among ourselves uh, and we hadn't uh, succeeded yet. So I hope that we will have another 500 years <coughs> because uh, we are the same, the same people, even more mixed today than we were before. So. We had a, uh, uh, about this problem, we, have, we had a, a, a civil war. You have a civil war here as well, because of the same reason. Hmm? We had one million people killed, you have 300,000 people killed. 
And we, uh, we uh, had a, a dictatorship. We had a, a, a regime of Franco, an autocracy, which was against, it was the sentry pit, sentry pit forces, political forces, everything was centralized. And uh, when we decided to build, to live together in, uh, again in 1978 through the crown, which was always saying that they wanted to be the crown of all the Spaniards, we opened the political uh, fan of, of, uh, of our sensitivities and we gave power to the regions protecting their identities and protecting their capacity to administrate better themselves. And this is what we did in 1978. Since then, we have, I have uh, said this before, we have lived together in a most successful uh, 40 years that <coughs> we have spent in the last two centuries. That is the truth. Uh, Catalonia during this time was uh, probably the most, uh, the richest uh, part of Spain the richest part of Spain, with all the capacities that uh, somebody we had in the Basque country. I, have a, I am half a Catalonian, half a Basque. So I know the problems uh, by heart, as you can understand. So uh, mm, um, we had the problem of, of the terrorism. And we, we focus all our attention to fight against people killing for the Mm, political ideals. No? When we fixed that, we started to have the problem of Catalonia, which the, the nationalism in Catalonia are the, and, uh, and the, the, the extre extremist nationalist in Catalonia had killed in the very beginning, but this was stopped. Uh, and, and, and I think that movement, fortunately, Terra Iure, was uh, ended uh, by, by uh, its own lack of sense. No? And now we are facing this, and, and the only thing that we would like to, to state very clearly is that we are living, we believe in the state of law. I think that um, all of us, we have room there, but we have a constitution, and this constitution grants the peace, the stability of Spain, the unity of Spain, and it is not unmovable. There, are a, there is a provision in, in there which says that if you want to go against this law, you have, through this law, the capacity to change, but you have to go through the law. If you breach the law, you are an outlaw, full stop. This is the problem. And that is the reason for, for our government taking the responsibility, because we have we sworn to, to be subject to the law, to grant that the law it is also uh, uh, ruling the Catalonia territory. And what we have done is to intervene there and to say, you have breached the law, you are subject to the law, and you will face the responsibilities that breaching the law have in Spain. And another thing that we have done is, and we call for general elections there to restore the legitimate government, autonomous government, so we haven't, we haven't uh, broken the, 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 the autonomy in Catalonia. We have said you have to be in the law and you have to live. But having said so, which is pure common sense, pure democratic system, we need another thing which is a little bit more immaterial than the law. Immaterial, not because it's not relevant, but, but mm, it is more difficult to grasp or more difficult to create. and. Uh, during this time, what uh, this nationalism has been built uh, in the in the in the difference it has been not not uh, not it has not been constructed like we are we have uh, mm, something to say, but this is you do not have anything to tell us, and this is built on hate, and you cannot build anything on hate. So if we want to restore the Catalonian people, which are the most important thing for us, and we insist every day from the government, we would like that all the people, companies, money fleeing from Catalonia because of this instability, which has been created 
by the rest of the Spaniards, they should come back. And they should, we should have Catalonia again as the brilliant, uh, mm, uh, powerful, uh, intelligent, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, contributing to the, to the good of Spain, to the, with the Spain, to the European Union, and to the civilized world. And this is what we have. So law and love. This is the receipt that we are applying there. It is very difficult because you know that uh, you need, uh, after a, a doses of, of, of hate and separation and, and, and lies, you need a lot of law, yeah, a lot of love to restore that. But we are there, and we will restore that. And I can tell you that the Catalonians will, uh, they have opened their eyes, many of them, in the sense that they are uh, living in Spain and within Spain they are more Catalonians, more Spanish, more Europeans, more free, more rich, and more uh, democratic. And that is, uh, that is the analysis of the situation. And we, we need do not, I, I was mentioned to the president, that we do not need to lie. It is enough to tell the truth to win this battle. Well, the, the, who needs to lie? The, uh, you, you cannot trust the people who lie in you. Hmm? No. This, is, this is very normal. You cannot trust. And this is very easy to prove because there is, his, there is the history there, the numbers there. If you analyze the, the facts, the matter of facts, what has been the reality? The waking up for the dream, the fleeing the companies, the people, and the money. That is very understandable, measurable. Uh, you can measure that, you know? So uh, what is the reaction? Go back and enhance the position of Catalonia in Spain. And this, this is the point. So having answered this, you, well, now we go to Spain and to the connections with the United States. That's, that's fine. You Thank clarified you. the situation quite well. That's why the EU uh, is very much uh, concerned. It's uh, certainly the uh, concern, um, the primary concern of Spain, but also uh, beyond Spain um, and uh, so on. When we deal with, uh, we, we had discussions here for a long time on the, the whole issue of uh, separatism and the implications of the security and the economic and the political and, the, and so forth. So it is really a concern of the European Union and uh, all sovereign states uh, and so on. Anyway, General... But, but let me explain, yeah, me tell you something, uh, Professor. European Union. has a lot of concerns. The first concern that has the European Union is the European Union. Yeah, you understand what I say. First, right. first, we have had the problem of the Brexit. Second, we have tried to build up a um, foreign and defense and security policy common. And it's not easy. And it's not easy. Third, we are facing uh, what we did not face before, which is the threat of the East and the threat of the South immigration and terrorism of this type. So the European Union, we have a lot of problems. And of course, as Juncker has said, the, 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 on top of that, if we add to the, 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 the uh, breach of the state nation as the ground for the time being for the European Union, we are jumping from something that can be controlled by their own capacities, the nation states, to an entity of uh, regions which has no common government, common policy. So, so you, you can imagine yeah. what could be a, a European Union of 62 right. regions. This, this is not viable. And that's why it is not viable. And because it is a very good thing, somebody is trying to to lead us to that 62 situation. And this is something that 
nor the European Union, neither the European Union nor the United States, which are allies of us, we should accept. The, the weakness of the European Union is not the, the, the strength of the United States. Eh? Yeah. And that's why you have come back to the European Union. In the very moment we saw the crisis of Crimea, the crisis of Syria, right. the crisis of the, the, the Mediterranean, and the crisis of Iran, by the way. <laughs> General, would you would you like to uh, oh, ask no, a I question at this point, or well, just give, give open the, it up? Uh, give our audience an opportunity. It's okay. All right. Um, fine. Please identify yourself for the record. Wait for the mic. Yeah, thanks a lot for an excellent uh, expose of your views. I just had basically a couple of related questions. Uh, I'm Dr. Amit Kumar from AAA International Security Consultants, LLC. We're a security consulting firm. And um, I just wanted to ask you, given the rather nationalistic or sub-nationalistic sentiments within the European Union as manifested by Brexit, and other crises uh, that are ensuing, as well as the involvement of Spain and the US both in the counterterrorism effort, be it the Sahara Sahel region or even otherwise in Afghanistan or Iraq and the like. Um, and of course, you mentioned the Rota Naval Station and the Moran Air Base. Uh, uh, the U.S. presence there. Do you think that the transatlantic relationships like NATO are getting stronger and more relevant than the European Union, given the political and economic uh, kind of centrifugal or centripetal forces that you mentioned? Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, at least when, when, when I was there, I was always uh, uh, trying to get the understanding of uh, the United States towards a European Union strong in defense, not isolated from NATO. Exactly the contrary. It is very difficult to manage uh, uh, and. Uh, political, military uh, 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 organization like NATO with 28 members. It's true that there is a, the big member, the big member, the United States. But I remember Panetta, La Hegel, and, and, and Carter going there and trying to, uh, to get, uh, mm, I mean, very patiently, hours of, of, of comments of the other 27, including my country trying to uh, aff afford our own views on that. So uh, this is a B. Uh, if Europe wants uh, to, to, to be credible, we need uh, to have a defense credible, European defense credible. This is difficult. Of course it is difficult. It is very difficult. But the future either goes that way or we will face tremendous problems because the the increase of 2% of expenditure which is requested, not towards NATO, because all of us, we pay our bill to NATO, but our own, our own national budget in defense, to increase that to 2%, which in my country could lead to 10,000 billion um, euros to 28,000 to 28, uh, uh, to, to 38 billion, sorry, 28 billion euros. Uh, this is something that uh, today, if we are very, uh, very um, sincere with ourselves, we need time to arrive to that. We need a GDP which is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, probably um, not a GDP. We need an economical situation where our deficit and the fight against our deficit could be easier than it is today. That is for sure. The thing is, we have to spend more, but we have to spend better, which is even more important. Uh, we are doing miracles with the money we have. We, as I, I, I repeat, we are in already and all the operation of European Union and NATO. But if Europe wants 
to be rationalized and to understand the problem to the contribution to NATO in an equal basis with the United States, we should build our own European defense and afford this and to speak two instead of speaking 28. And this is exactly the current in a different way in, uh, as what we have been speaking before, which is unify, not separate. It's, it's, very, it's very clear. We in, in, in Europe, we have, I don't know, 15 type of tanks, 70 types of, of uh, missile, uh, different systems of, of communication. Even though we afford this to NATO, it is not useful. We should more and more start to homologate all our systems. It's a dream. It's the most uh, likely thing uh, as, uh, as a dream that I have ever uh, thought, but it is necessary. And as it is necessary, even dreams, when are necessary, are accomplished. And this is what we have to do. Unfortunately, unfortunately, today, uh, the, the European Union has, is reacting to that. And in a very humble way, there are, for the first time in history, they are not rejecting to invest in defense because it was outside the, 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 the European <coughs> Union <coughs> defense concept and investing money there. How is it possible? How can you build that without this type of granting with your own capacities, the, your democracy? So we are there. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, it is a pity because we, we had a problem because uh, the problem that has been fixed with, with the, in the Brexit particularly. We, we, we have to analyze the Brexit because Brexit has its own, uh, its own uh, um, uh, mm, I mean, uh, nuances regarding why Brexit has succeeded. Hmm? And, uh, but one of these uh, in interesting uh, um, data from, from the, the Brexit is that the future voted for no Brexit and the past voted for Brexit. And the past will not come back. What is coming is the future, the young people. And this is what we have to, to, uh, to analyze. And they were, I mean, the British were always, and, and, and I understand, I, uh, uh, NATO is enough, NATO is enough, NATO is enough, NATO is enough. But at the same time, they were in, in, in the European Union. And, uh, and uh, the, the idea is that we could arrive to something could be led by Germany and France. Could be, could be. De we do not have problems with that. The only problem that we have is we have to build the defense from up to down. This, uh, we cannot build the defense from the industry up. No, no, because then we have problems of, of, uh, of supply or problems of this type of thing. So we would like, uh, to your question, we would like to face uh, this type of threats, this type of nationalism, radicalism in the nationalism, we need to have a political project which is, uh, which is uh, uh, fascinating our citizenship. And uh, this fascination, this, uh, this, uh, I, this enthusiasm for that comes back and we are able to afford to the West something more than a European Union, which is weak, because it's not completely united yet. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you, Ambassador, for your presentation. Uh, two points. The first one has to do with the issue that we were discussing here regarding the strengthening of the European Union as a military, I mean, strengthening the military power in itself. Uh, the, my, my point is, wouldn't you say that the Europe is moving in that direction, particularly if you remember at the beginning of the current U.S. administration, there was some hesitation about NATO and so on, and I remember Mrs. Merkel, the German Chancellor, saying, 
now we have to rethink as Europe our defenses. And I think that, you know, I mean, giving Germany the country that is and is a le one leading country in the European Union, I would expect that a lot of the discussion has to be going in that direction. And the second point is much more related, you know, to the internal challenges, no? And, uh, and this is a question that I have, I mean, Spain has been, I mean, has these uh, systems of autonomies, no? To what extent the current system of autonomy has not allowed, you know, the exacerbation of nationalistic sentiments in certain regions of the country? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your... Thank you. Uh, well, I, I think that the, the Councillor uh, Merkel um with uh, with all due respect of what I'm going to say to Councillor Merkel, is saying exactly what I have said. I mean when when somebody has asked them uh, you, the European Union has to defend uh, them itself, President Trump, and that call to the United States, this has been corrected afterwards after Article 5, we will be very much respectful with Article 5. But, uh, I mean, this spirit of, say, of doing your business, I can understand that. I can absolutely, I can understand that. But what Merkel said was that uh, she understood the, the, the message. And we have to do our job here. And the way to do our job here precisely is to take care of our own problems. And to take care of our own problems is to get together again, one more time, together, unify. That is the way. Union is the way. Separation is not the way. That is, and, and so that's why she has moved with Macron the, the way to lead a European Union of Defense. Let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes, but the principle that this is necessary, this is the first time I have heard, because after five years the, I, I was, I saw the, the, some sympathetic movement, but I didn't see any money. You know, it's very important. When you put the money, then it's that you believe. And, uh, and now uh, it looks like money is going to be on the table to lead to identify common uh, common uh, technologies, identify common uh, uh, how to build up the the industry with the particularities of each country. But this is now led to something which is more in a commonality of interest than before. And this is a very good news for NATO as well, not only for the European. In the other. Uh, in the other aspect of your question, this is a uh, this is something that everybody asks uh, himself. I mean, uh, in Spain, um, somebody is accusing the Constitution of being an open Constitution regarding the autonomy system. All those are believing that the autonomy, as it is in itself, an autonomy and not something going out of the borders of the autonomy is something that is better. <coughs> that is a fact. The fact is that uh, after 40 years of uh, autonomy, Spain, uh, when we started in 1978, had uh, 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 GDP per capita of uh, 7000 or $8,000. Today we have $37,000. It is provoked by the autonomy. I wouldn't say that it is provoked by the autonomy. It is provoked by the freedom, by the opening of the market, by going to the world, by sending our company, our businessmen, open our borders. No, this is what has created that. But the autonomy has served, uh, has been very useful as well. As anything, Paracelsus used to say there are no poison, no remedies. It all depends on the doses. So this is what I say. The doses is the key. And the doses as being that the, the health of, of Spain was wonderful, 
Now, in some part of Spain, there is not so wonderful the health, the doses, the doses. Hmm? Okay. Well. Well. Professor. Yes. Gonna, thank you very much for your time. General, would you like to? No. I don't have no. You're not done yet, are you? Okay. Uh, but we have uh, oh, seven in the back. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, Thank you for a very insightful presentation. You talked about radicalization earlier, and I wanted to ask more specifically about the bilateral efforts and agreement, not only across the Atlantic, but those more regionally, as in, in North Africa with Spain. The, the bilateral connection with your country there, enough. I, I'm afraid I, I haven't understood you. That, that's why, because it, it probably is very late. In, in, in the, but could you repeat? Because I, I, if you are speaking about the connection that we have in the in Moron and in, in the anti shield, uh, uh, this is I can explain. If you are asking me ra about radicalization in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, if this is this is apart from the connection between our countries. So right, but also a, internally, there? with Morocco and Algeria, for those who come into Spain, then and I, also I mean, the reverse. I will explain the, the situation as far as I know. In Egypt, Libya, hmm, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco, another, hmm, but let, let's uh, stop there. Egypt, we had Mursi. And Mursi was backed by the Muslim Brotherhood. I was visiting uh, a country in the Gulf, and uh, when I said, uh, "What is doing Mursi in in uh, in Egypt?" Uh, somebody answered me, uh, "Well, Mursi has been elected with the system that that you are doing in your own country." And I said, "Yes, yes, but." I don't know, but uh, it will last for a very short time if, if he continues uh, governing in such a way. And this happened. This happened. So uh, now we have a problem of uh, radicalism in Egypt in the peninsula of Sinai, which is affecting Egypt and is affecting the, the countries around. What will happen with that? Because it's a branch of ISIS. I don't know. They are fighting against that, and we are. Uh, is a, is a common enemy, ISIS, no? Or the radical, uh, the radical terrorism. Libya, Libya is a, uh, today we are trying to build something there. They are in a very, ci in a civil war among them. They have no state. They, uh, um, the Tripolitania is one thing and the other uh, area is a, a, another thing. I do, do not remember the name now. And, um, they have uh, to become a country, and still they are not. Mm? And they have a south when all the weapons of Gaddafi are uh, are uh, under in, uh, in different uh, places, secret places, and they are uh, um, being utilized by some uh, terrorists there. And in the traffic of the Sahel, so unstable, danger, uh, a failure state and therefore refuge for the bad guys. Tunisia is affected by this situation and they they are the only I mean they are the 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 uh, Arab Spring was uh, were uh, really a uh, triumph was in in, <coughs> in uh, Tunisia and that's why they are not forgiven by the terrorists, but they are attacked in the beaches, and so, so this is something. But the, something that concerns us, because they had a tremendous civil war among themselves, of course, among themselves, is, is Argelia. Argelia, Bouteflika is a very old man. Bouteflika is now a symbol of, of Argelia, but uh, I mean, I don't know how, how, for how long he will live. And after that, we don't know. Fortunately, fortunately, they have a strong state in, in Algeria. And fortunately, I don't think that uh, ISIS now 
or Al Qaeda are strong enough to come to Algeria and to destabil I don't think to destabilize Algeria. And uh, Morocco Morocco has a monarchy and I think <coughs> that they have uh, very intelligently opened uh, the door to, for some political sensitivities <coughs> but for the time being they are uh, they are uh, refusing the society of Morocco the people of Morocco they are refusing the violent uh, the violent radicalization but uh, the people that we have radicalized are um, um, the majority of them <coughs> are coming from the Spanish citizens in the north of Africa, which is in the border of Morocco, is Ceuta and Melilla. And um, people killing in Spain, people killing here, are some of them, and uh, very, uh, very uh, significant uh, number are from Morocco. Are foreign fighters going to Syria from Morocco? And doing uh, uh, so, it is a concern. It is a concern. It is a concern. How how we can fight against terror? Uh, fundamentally, fundamentally fighting against the causes of terror. If you have <laughs> power, <coughs> no uh, future for the young people. Um, if uh, we are not investing and helping these countries to have their own capacities to live by themselves. Uh, we are building uh, the, the, the we are building uh, mm, a situation the same as piracy in Somalia. We are building a situation where this coming into radicalism is the only way these people have in regarding piracy to reivindicate themselves as human beings. It's tremendous, that, that situation. No? And uh, I'm not speaking about ISIS, but uh, where ISIS collects this type of people are in the marginal people and, uh, and in the countries where, like some part of uh, Nigeria, the Sahel, the, the N Niger and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, the Chad and uh, Eritrea, all, all these type of things were these people, um, Mali, where we are there, Mali, uh, um, Senegal, uh, Mauritania, the, where these people have no future. The president of uh, of uh, Senegal told me, provided. If, excuse me, if a young Senegalese prefers to die in the Mediterranean as to live in Senegal, you are lost, Europe, because they are risking their lives to come. If on top of that you give them some ideology, and on top of that you make him a, a hero, and on top of that, then you are directly leading to feed these uh, radical uh, terrorist movements that they are following a strategy which is to destroy our system. Full stop. We, uh, they will be one, uh, I mean, uh, I, I saw that in, in, in television. Uh, there was something discussing only 10% of the Muslim people of the Ummah uh, are radical people. Yeah, but 10% of the Ummah are uh, 100 million. 100 million. Hopefully, I, I, I would like to, to say that we have to combat, to combat the consequences, the terror, but we have to combat as well the causes of the terror, right. and that is the way. Okay, any other question? Okay, let me ask one question, and then General Gray will take uh, over. Uh, my question is, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, for example, uh, Morocco and <coughs> what uh, they're trying to do, particularly when the uh, king uh, tried to 
introduce uh, some tolerance uh, of religion and um, bring in some of the imams uh, and religious uh, clergy uh, to discuss uh, ways how can religion advance the cause of peace. Uh, do, you, do you think that uh, religion, in this case we're talking about uh, Islam, can make a contribution? Um, on the other end, uh, we find that uh, the Pope is um, preaching and trying to build bridges uh, around the world in terms of uh, brotherhood and the whole idea of uh, unity of mankind. So um, as another tool, and uh, obviously to combat terrorism, uh, there are different uh, tactics, uh, different uh, strategies and approaches. Um, but the question is, uh, can uh, religion play a role in your view? Yes, I think the Morocco is doing a very remarkable and in sometimes er heroic uh, um, activity, sending Morocco imams to the Sahel, to Mali, and to areas where radicalism is trying to uh, to install them, uh, themselves, uh, itself, no? And uh, this is because um, in Morocco uh, there is a Islam, as it is explained, as these imams are completely against the radicalism. And they try to explain the people there in this country that there are a different way to understand Islam, which is a religion, and which is not the radicalism. It's a very good idea because it's affecting the, the ideology in the, where, where the ideology starts to grow. Because the others are explaining that the only the jihad and the war against the, this is the only way to be a good Muslim. And this is exactly the contrary as the Morocco imams are explaining in Sahel area. So uh, if you say, is religion a way, uh, uh, I mean, depending on what you understand, uh, if religion is linked with unity, with unity up and to the to, this is religion so what whatever is not up or we are together this is not religion this is another thing even if it disguises religion right that is my view so religion is a bad thing if it is a true religion it is not a true religion is not this is a b c this is not true no 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 religion is to go up and to go uh, to the to uh, all together. That is religion. So when we smell that the religion is saying you are not, uh, 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 you are to be uh, to be killed because you are, do not believe in what I believe. This is not religion. Right? This is another thing. This is power or or uh, whatever uh, disguised as as religion. Okay, John Gray. You ready to wrap it up? Yep. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for, uh, I think, a very enlightening uh, discussion and, and talk. There's no question that, uh, that the country of Spain is uh, vital to uh, all nations who, uh, who desire to live in peace uh, for many, many reasons. They've been good friends for a long time, uh, and not just in the in the military side of things, which I'm very familiar with, but really uh, geopolitically, economically, and all the elements of, of national power. And Spain is, uh, has considerable influence, not just in, uh, in the four or five countries the ambassador talked about, like Morocco and Egypt and so on, but really throughout Africa, throughout Latin America, uh, really around the world. And as part of the whole globalization connection with the economy and this and that, Spain can uh, can uh, quite often serve as what we call an interlocutor, if you will, or a spokesman uh, to present uh, the views of not just our country but the free world as we know it today. And so uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that uh, 
that we're continuing these kind of cooperative uh, uh, operations, which are, are vital. With respect to the military and the situation in the, <clears throat> throughout the Mediterranean and in Africa and in uh, Europe, particularly in, uh, in Southern Europe and in, uh, <clears throat> in the Balkans and places of that, uh, of that uh, geographical location. Uh, Spain today, through the bases that the ambassador has mentioned, um, they're vital to what we're doing. For example, he mentioned the Marines. We send uh, a, uh, we, we not only have uh, maritime forces that you're all familiar with that go out to uh, the places like the Mediterranean and, and elsewhere around the world, but we're a little bit short on amphibious ship, ships right now, and so we mm -hmm. don't have the permanent presence in the Mediterranean that we had since 1947. And to counter that, we use what we call a special purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force. And uh, these units are out there 24-7, uh, 365. Uh, they support three geographic uh, commanders at the same time. They support uh, the commander in Africa, the commander in Europe, and the commander of the Central Command in, in, uh, in the Mideast and, uh, and near uh, Asia. So uh, very vital. Uh, their humanitarian operations, their military operations, their anti-terrorist operations, and uh, and it's all part of the teamwork that uh, that NATO and that the European Union and other uh, friendships and alliances are trying to make uh, make happen. I think that uh, we have to realize, as I've said many times in many places, uh, terrorism is a tactic, and it's been around since the Bible and the Torah and the Quran and all the other uh, religious uh, documents and the like. Uh, it's used by, uh, by people many times in many places uh, that are uh, inferior in terms of capability, military equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so they use terrorist tactics. And uh, you're never going to stamp out completely this war on terrorism. That's a ridiculous uh, idea in the first place. What you can do, of course, is, is, is uh, provide sufficient uh, understanding, capability, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can make it uh, really not worthwhile uh, over the long term. And, uh, and that's what we have to do. And so uh, you're, you're always going to have that kind of threat. It's closely related, some, in many cases, to crime. It's uh, related to money laundering and all the other financial uh, wrongdoings that go on around the world. It's, uh, there's a lot of entry points, if you will, or entry yeah. points into this whole uh, operation. And, uh, and the people, uh, it may or may not be tied into uh, ISIS or to Al-Qaeda or to any of the other uh, groups and this and that. Some people are no more affiliated with them than I am, but they claim to be because it's part of the propaganda, it's part of the information warfare. And that's another area where we, in a, in a, who have grown up in a free society, a democratic society, if you will, uh, basically we, we, don't, uh, uh, we don't really use propaganda very well. It's kind of an anti-term in our vocabulary. It, it comes in part in recent history. It comes in part with our experience in, uh, in World War II and with what the Germans did and this and that. Uh, but this information is used uh, extraordinarily well by our adversaries. And in fact, uh, you could say in many ways that they're, they're winning the information war. And uh, when we do have an incident, uh, it should be reported, it should be in the media, but we shouldn't talk about it forever and a day, and we do. And all of that publicity, all of that notoriety, that just makes, again, these further people, these people who have been, quote, oppressed, unquote, it just further uh, invigorates them, if you will, with uh, to want to, to join these things. And that's part of the whole uh, idea of, of uh, this so-called radicalization of the young people and all that kind of so, so there's a lot of, of, of angles here, if you will. There's a lot of things to think about. Um, I think uh, globally we're on the right track. Uh, fortunately, you don't hear so much about the, the successes we have because uh, that's one of the reasons why we have the successes. We have to be quiet about it. Although I have to say that uh, my country is not very good at being quiet sometimes, but that's another, that's another issue. So with all that, thanks you. Thank you very much thank again, you, Mr. Sir. Ambassador. And please, uh, please come back and see us. I will. Thank I you. I notice that uh, you have a, a lot of naval 
uh, background. Yeah, yes. uh, that's good. Well, that's good. We uh, need a I good was born in the seashore, yeah. and all my uh, three brothers, we, we devoted our uh, professional activity to the sea. But the, 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 the most uh, awkward uh, uh, thing in my life is that I, I specialized as a maritime lawyer, mm. but in order to, to become and to exercise as a maritime lawyer, I had to go to, go to Madrid, which is 300 kilometers from the shore. <laughs> and this is something that uh, mm. I think that now uh, fortunately, I, I moved there, no? but uh, it's very strange. I first went to, uh, to Spain before you were born in 1964. They had a huge, uh, <laughs> they had a huge maritime operation uh, in the Mediterranean, and they had 94 uh, NATO ally ships in the Mediterranean, and it was, but it was focused uh, uh, location-wise on Spain and off Spain mm -hmm. and all that, and we were trying to show solidarity and then I got when I was a uh, when I was uh, young enough to do things when I was a, a battalion commander I got to uh, to run the first uh, night helicopter borne operation by Marines and Spanish Marines uh, mm -hmm. in in uh, in and around the King, yeah. 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 1971 yeah. Yeah. we're getting we're getting 71, up there. I, I had made my military service yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much thank you thank you very much Thank you.